quick turnaround <clears throat> with uh, a Saturday Tuesday game against South Carolina. Um, we uh, we were down twenty something in Columbia, and we were down the first half almost fourteen, I think, um, when we played them uh, here at Auburn. So there's something about the matchup and the way South Carolina plays that obviously has uh, has been effective. Um, we were able to come back last year at home and and uh, clinch the championship. Um, Bryce Brown had you know a tremendous game, and and uh, I'm sure that given on the heels of the way he played against Kentucky as well as the way he played against South Carolina, there's going to be a tremendous amount of effort and energy to take him out and make other guys uh, beat him. Um, you know, it starts and ends with Silva. Um, he is a uh, He's a very active, hard-playing big man. He he gets to the foul line probably as much or more than any big in our league. Um, and uh, you know we uh, we had two centers foul out in the last game, and Horace Spencer and Anthony McLemore. So there's no doubt in my mind that South Carolina's going to offense is going to run right through the big fella. Um, I uh, I gave uh, I had talked to our team early in the SEC season, uh, complimenting Frank Martin in South Carolina when they got off to a good start. And the lesson that I was drawing um, was that uh, I asked the players, but I even think before our first SEC game, why they thought South Carolina had, uh, had gotten off to a good start. It might have been a game or two in the league, I'm not sure. And I got a variety of answers, and a lot of more, they were all right, they were all correct in the, kid, the way the kids answered. but. I jumped in with my answer, and that is because Frank Martin had lost his locker room. In other words, they were, I, I want to say, what, six and seven in the non-conference or something like that? Uh, five and seven going to Florida. And it takes a last second, you know, phenomenal win, you know, to kind of get things turned around. But the bottom line was, look, it doesn't matter what you're going through. And uh, I think especially, like, on a day like today, celebrating Martin Luther King Day. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how dark it is. It matters what you're going to do about it. And I give those guys credit, you know, for that. Um, and I give my team credit uh, for bouncing, being able to bounce back after a loss at uh, Ole Miss. And now we're faced with trying to bounce back with two road games. So we open up with four out of six on the road, and one of the home games is Kentucky. It's a challenging schedule, but I think if you look at the league and you look at six teams now, ranked in the top 25 in the country. I think it just speaks volumes about the grind and how important it is to keep your locker room. You talked about South Carolina. I mean, they lost to Stony Brook, Wyoming. When you're watching tape, if you have from those games compared to the first four of the, the conference season, you know, on the court, kind of what's the difference? Right, right. And you could add Watford to that. But Stony Brook and Watford are both winning their league right now. So, you know, it's... Uh, they played good teams. They also lost to Virginia and Michigan. <laughs> so they've lost to good teams. Uh, the zone bothered them against uh, uh, Wyoming on the road. It did not bother them on the road in Nashville against Vanderbilt. So, I mean, that would be um, part, of, part of that factor. So, yeah, they're playing. Uh, they've got their rotations down now. I think they feel good about who they're playing and, and their rotations. And they're playing better. <coughs> Yeah, I, I, I thought we did fine. Um, we missed Austin's physicality. Um, and, uh, you know, we missed that inside scoring presence, that rim protection. Um, and I thought that Kentucky, you know, physically, um, they got the better of us. They out-rebounded us. They fouled us really hard at the rim. Uh, there was a lot of hook and hold plays. It was, uh, it was a pretty chippy contest. Um, and South Carolina plays harder and more physically than Kentucky does. So we're going to have to be able to respond to uh, the elevated play and the elevated physicality. Um, we got to find a way to get to the foul line ourselves more. Um, you know, last year we shot about 25 free throws a game. This year we're shooting about 19. And, um, and yet we've got a little bit more of an inside presence with Austin and with some of the other guys. 
Now Mustafa made your foul, and so did Deshaun. So we lost two guys that did a good job of getting fouled. But getting to the line 19 times is not enough. And sending, you know, we've sent four SEC opponents now to the line 30 times, 120 free throws. We're fouling too much. So <clears throat> it's one thing about being aggressive, but you got to be aggressive without fouling. How do you kind of do that with, you know, Horace and Anthony both kind of had foul trouble? <clears throat> well, I thought, I thought, for example, one thing they could do a better job of, there were times when they were both pressed up on the perimeter, which we like to do. But then as soon as Kentucky's bigs put the ball down the floor, they stayed pressed up. you got to retreat. you got to be able to guard in space and, <clears throat> and not try to chest up and try to make that contact there because that contact out on the floor gets, gets called. So you got to press that without fouling. Press that without fouling. I think Anfrey's got his confidence back. I mean, I think the way he played against Georgia and Texas A&M, I thought, were really, really positive. Um, and then he got smacked upside the head early in that Kentucky game, lost a contact, and truly was he was dizzy out there. And that sort of set him back a little bit. Um, and then the fouls and the frustration. So I, I would think those are the things to focus on more than returning to the scene of the, you know, where he got hurt. Um, my reaction to that would be that it would be a great opportunity then. So, no, I don't think he's going to be freaked out by playing in South Carolina. But I do think it's another opportunity to remind everybody how professional South Carolina was in that situation. I mean, our trainer, Clark Pearson, put that thing right back into place right away so Anthony didn't get a chance to look at it pointing, you know, south, southwest. Um, and... And the, and, the, and the tremendous professionalism of, of the doctors and the care he got at South Carolina. Um, it just means more. I mean, it's, it was for the SEC. And then how Frank Martin handled not only Anthony's injury um, and it being one of our, you know, we, we won a bunch of games at that point and we lost. And then to come in here and lose to us in a championship situation. Um, and I just got to tell you that Frank Martin was happy for his friend Bruce Pearl that we won a championship immediately after vic after defeat. And there just aren't many dudes that are built like that. He's as genuine and first class uh, and as outstanding a coach as there is in the league. So for me, I think those are things to step. If you want to step back, step back. And, and you know, and thanks for the reminder, but I think that's what I jump out at. I really do I think you have a chance to think about. No, no, I don't. Uh, I, I think it's a couple of weeks. That's what they told me. So that was a couple of days ago. So it's a it's a couple of weeks and a couple of days less than yeah. a couple of weeks. Well, we didn't we didn't do too much yesterday. I mean, we came in yesterday and uh, we watched film of 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 South Carolina. Um, we watched. We're watching some individual film today of ourselves against Kentucky with the assistant coaches, but not as a team. Um, that'd be too difficult as a team. That'd be a hard one to watch together because we we uh, we played um, we played heroically, but we didn't play well enough to win. And there's a lot there were a lot of breakdowns, and they're the kind of breakdowns that, gosh, if you could have. I get amazed by the Patriots. I just get amazed by watching New England, and. Um, the fact that they don't beat themselves, the fact that they, um, you know, the opponent knows they're never out of it. They know they're never out of it. Um, and when they have lost, it's because somebody made real plays to beat them. They just did not beat themselves. And so Brady can trust his line. He can trust, you know, um, Edelman to get open and make a play. He can trust Gronk. I just, it's, it's just amazing the consistency there and quite frankly made watching Belichick makes me feel quite inferior as a coach for real I mean I'm a Patriots fan I grew up I grew up there and uh, I grew up with the Boston Patriots I and mean, I grew up when they were bad I grew up with Jim Nance running playing fullback I mean you know when John Hanna was a guard 
Seven big 73 was the best left guard. He was a great player for Alabama. I mean, I'd already been a Patriots fan for many, many years. But uh, but it just gets me to challenge me to work hard to, to again, get, ourself, get our guys in position where the opponent is the one that beats us. And that's what they do so well. Six inches. Yeah, well, Horace had the best plus minus in the game. Um, Horace is our toughest, most physical player, and that's what would stand to reason in a, in a game like that. So you point it out, you compliment him, and then uh, we just, again, we just move, we move, uh, we move on and see if we can learn from, from that. Does his role grow or change with us now, or do you need more out of him, or just more of the same? Well, I mean, I mean, first of all, his position's changed. Horace has gone from playing power forward with Schumann to playing center with Anthony. So it's actually a positive individually for Horace because he's a better center than he is a power forward for lots of reasons, closer to the basket and the defense and the rebounding and rim protection, so on and so forth. Um, and then offensively, it gives me players like Schumann and D'Angelo who can both be guarded on the perimeter, and in some ways it's a, it's a positive there. I'm just, you know... Um, I'm glad. I'm glad Dangel's back in the rotation for Dangel and for us. He does. He, he he's going to keep playing better and better as we as we move forward. And again, it's such a great, great life lesson to stay ready and put yourself in position so that when your number is called and we all get our opportunity, everybody here in this room, myself included, and anybody that's listening. And the question is, when you do get that, what did you do to prepare? And did you have yourself both physically and mentally ready to put yourself in the best position to take advantage of that opportunity? Because because chances are, prior to getting that opportunity, you probably thought you should have gotten it already. And you may not have. And so what are you going to do with that? And that's just the thing. That's just a, it's just a great, great opportunity. Young people. That's what we try to teach our students. You know, young people now, um, they, they should want greatness and they should want to have success. But there's a really good chance they're not going to get it right out of college. They're not going to get it the day they leave Auburn. So what are they doing to put themselves in position to grind and and be in position when that opportunity presents itself? And so that's what Dan Jell is in, and I have every confidence that he's going to take advantage of it. When you think back to the last time you played South Carolina and you're at home and just getting that win and winning the SEC, what were the images that come back first and what well, I think the image is every time I watch film of last year, I realize that we have a chance to be a better team than we were last year. Now, our record probably won't be the same because the league is better and even more competitive. Um, we got a chance to be better. We do. That said, we could lose every game we play the rest of the way. We can win them all. I mean, I just I don't know where it's going to go. That's why you kind of play them out. The second thing it says is it was pretty special now. I mean, it was pretty special to be able to survive all that, the injuries, the suspensions, um, and, 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 and manage to win. You know, that's why we, Auburn's only won three in, you know, since 1960 because they're very, very precious, and it makes you appreciate very, very much you know, what we're able to accomplish. But at the same time, I, I have hope because I think we can be a better team than we were a year ago regardless of the record, what, whatever the record might say. So that's what we're working on. When you look at the SEC standings, where it's going to say sort of run away with it early, just to make this a really important week. You know, it, I have said, and I don't want to, I'm not going to get in, I, I want to work on getting better. We have two road games coming up. I'm not, I'm, we're not defending a championship. I've made, two, I've made two strong statements. One, I've said we have a chance to be better, which could then, you know, well, what about the championship? I'm not there yet. Tennessee... As I've said before, I think is head and shoulder of the rest. What does that tell you? I've said it before. I, I really do. That's what I believe. I'm always going to stretch you guys and our fans to tell you how I really feel. Um, yeah, if we want to keep pace for a championship, we got work to do this weekend. We got to get back into it and uh, go to a couple of places where hardly anybody's going to win. Like like South Carolina is not going to lose many home games in the SEC at South Carolina, and Mississippi State's not going to lose many. So if you can get those, yeah, you better believe we're now where we are helped our 
chances of staying in range of a championships at the same time. Okay, thanks, guys.